So I have a couple of questions for you in this video. Do you have a bucket list? Have you thought about what is on your bucket list and how important do you think that is? Let's talk about that coming up. If you don't know me, I'm Bonita. I'm from rural Kansas. I am the daughter of farmers, the granddaughter of farmers on both sides, and I love to travel. I retired early at the end of October, and I'm currently wintering in South Texas because I have lived a frugal lifestyle and I have saved up my money. So that is something that I'm doing right now. I will be returning home soon. But I keep a bucket list on my phone of things I want to see, things I want to do, places I want to travel. And one of the things that I had researched and had on my list to do when I came down here was to visit the only certified hand-drawn ferry in the United States. And this goes to Mexico over the Rio Grande. My in-laws also winter down here, and there's a lot of things that I have found since I've been down here and I have told them about that they didn't even know about, and they've been coming here for seven years. So they did know about the hand-drawn ferry, but they weren't able to find it. Well, now I know why. It was hard to find, but it was worth finding. So I'm going to take you on that journey with me next. I'm in the town of Los Ebenes. I'm trying to find the hand-drawn car ferry. They let you go over riding and they also take your car over for $5. I don't want to ride across the Rio Grande. I just want to see it. But I ran across this really cool old mission. It was established in 1912 and very, very cool. These are the cactus that I would just love to know what kind they are. The bottom turns into like a petrified tree and then the top keep growing. They're very unique. I've never seen them until here. One of the things I love down here are the cemeteries. They are so brightly decorated and maintained. And most all of the houses down here have wrought iron gates. And if you can see, they also have gates on their front porch entrance. Well, I did find it. Even the speed bump was treacherous. I mean, look at this center bump. And you don't even know that it's there until your car drags. I mean, look at this. And this is a pretty poor rundown area but even as far into the rio grande valley as i live there are bars on all the windows bars on all of the front porches on the front doors all the side doors everything yeah this is where you would cross at but it has that it is closed right now I'm gonna walk up here a ways and see what I can see. I mean, it says you can go across as a pedestrian for $2 and that you can go across with a car for $5. But I have heard that it's five minutes to get across and an hour to get back because of customs. I just wanted to see the ferry. This was quite an event even getting this far, honestly. Here's where you pay. And here's where you would cross if you could get in. 
They even have tire spikes when you go through the gate if you try to back up. And here is the information about the toll crossing on the ferry bridge. Okay, you can see the hand-drawn ferry from here. I'm down past where it says not to come, but it's, it's on the side. You can tell a lot of people have walked down here just to see it, but there it is. And there's the Rio Grande, and there's the Mexico side on the other side. So I hope you enjoyed that. It was quite an adventure. That speed bump was treacherous. Not only did I drag the bottom of my car, but I stubbed my big toe on it after I parked my car to walk up there and bloodied my big toe. So I have my first injury of the trip. Thankfully, I did not fall down. But I just spoke to one of my classmates the other day. We're coming up on our 40th year anniversary of our graduation. And he said, my bucket list is getting smaller and smaller. He had gone to Australia a few years ago. He only has Alaska and Hawaii left to go to all the states here in the US. Now I've gone to all the states in the US. I was able to check Mexico off of my list on this trip. My parents had gone before I was born, but I had never been there. So I actually got to cross over and do that this time. But I have lots of things in the US I wanna see. There is so much beautiful country. There's so many little hidden jewels, like what we just saw. And I find history really interesting, even though I never really did in high school growing up, I love visiting places with history and reading about them and learning about them as an adult. My kids even told me when we took them on vacations that they didn't learn that much always in school. They learned more by us visiting the places that we went, like Custer's Last Stand. So I just think travel is so priceless and I try to do it frugally. I have traveled to Maryland by myself to visit my son. I've traveled to Oregon by myself to visit my daughter. I plan to go to North Carolina later this year and visit my son. So I travel sometimes by myself. My husband doesn't always have the availability to go with me, unfortunately. So I have no problem traveling alone. Let me know if that's something that you would do. Would you travel alone to be able to see some of these things that are important to you to check off that bucket list? Now, not everyone can travel, and I do enjoy showing you some of the things that I find because I know some of you cannot travel, but there's other things on your list that you can check off. My mother-in-law right now is learning how to knit. She is almost 79, and that's something she wanted to learn how to do. There are so many things you can add to that list, things you want to learn. And with the availability of YouTube, you can learn these things for free. So let me know what is on your bucket list. So I found another free thing to do while I was down here. I'm down here at a nature center and botanical gardens that is just open to the public and free. So we're going to walk through and enjoy this. And as you can see, I had the whole place to myself. So lots of trails here, if you want to go through them all and make your way around. This is the McAllen, Texas Nature Center. And like I said, tons of trails, as you can see. And the center is open, free to the public. Then I found this interesting little structure. I'm not quite sure what it's for. There doesn't seem to be anything inside of it. I thought maybe there was like a sewer clean out or something in there, but there isn't anything. Let me know if you know what this is. Then I ran across this, which totally freaked me out because one of these was in our park the other day, and I guess maintenance was requested to get rid of it and they just laughed because they will actually eat a rattlesnake. And then I decided I probably should be hiking in something other than flip-flops out here. But 
the trails are really wide and open which is wonderful so you can see really well what's around you or if there's anything close around you um, there's so many winding trails in here and even though they are marked on the sidewalk where the exit is and there's a few signs here and there um, there's a lot of walking here a lot a lot I've mentioned to you I want to learn more about canning. I'm going to start with some of the easy things this summer and see if I can master those. I'm keeping an eye out for a canner. That's something I don't really want to put full price into until I know if I'm going to be able to do it. So I've been looking for one used or looking for one that pops up somewhere that I can buy it easily and cheaply so that I can practice. So I have things on my bucket list that are not just travel, but I feel like bucket lists are so important. I feel like they give us energy, they give us determination, they give us motivation, they give us things to look forward to. I don't want every day to look the same. I like for things to inspire me to keep going and keep trying new things. I have other things on my bucket list like continuing to declutter my home, downsize my home, get things where they are more manageable and there's less to keep track of. I have other things on my bucket list like spending more time with my grandchildren now that I'm retired. There are so many things we can put on there that do not have to be difficult for us to do. So I was just wanting to inspire you today to get out there and explore what is on your bucket list. Is there things that you can do right from your home? There are things we can still do and still explore and still learn and get excited about? I feel like that's been the key to keeping me motivated all of these years. So I always was in the planning stages of planning my next adventure. I already have plans to paint when I get home and do some little upkeep things that will freshen up my home but not cost very much. And I'm looking forward to doing those and those are on my bucket list. So bucket lists can be as easy, as difficult, as expensive, as inexpensive as you want to make them. But I feel like they are so important. Let me know your thoughts. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And if you would, if you would give me a big thumbs up, I would really appreciate that. And I hope to see you in the next video.